as you can expect, my talk is going to be about technology in finance. Uh, and uh, the point I'm trying to make with this talk is that all financial services firms, banks, exchanges, even insurance companies, are actually technology firms, uh, which should be great news for a lot of you who are aspiring technologists, especially those who want to work in finance. Uh, but even for others, uh, I hope that my talk will give you a brief insight into the changes uh, that are happening uh, in this area. It's a bank, it's an exchange, it's actually a technology firm. Uh, this idea first came to me, or I first uh, mentioned this idea in a training session uh, where we had uh, participants from uh, the different departments within a typical bank. Uh, we had people from business, front office sales, from uh, controls, compliance, uh, risk management, from finance, from HR, from operations or back office, and of course technology. And uh, we were discussing about the strategic direction for global banks, and I dropped the bomb that uh, JP Morgan is a technology firm. Uh, there was an immediate uproar, uh, and everybody started vehemently opposing the idea. Uh, uh, each, each, each person wanted to show the primacy of their own department. Uh, the first ones off the bat were obviously the sales folks. Uh, and uh, they were like, you know, we own the client, we own the revenues. Uh, what uses technology without a client to service, uh, without the revenues to fund it? Uh, my response to them was based on a few examples of how the businesses in banking are transitioning. Uh, let's, let's start with uh, uh, trading. All of you must be aware of stock trading on exchanges such as BAC, NSC. Uh, this business, uh, a couple of decades ago, was completely dominated by front office. Um, traders did everything manually from deciding what to trade to how to trade it. Uh, there were hundreds of traders and your relationship with your client was primarily driven by these traders. Uh, so much so that if a trader left the firm, you risked that some of the clients would move with them. Uh, fast forward for, from that to now where you have computer programs being uh, used uh, across the board. Uh, for, for selecting which stock to trade, you need to churn a lot of data in, in a lot of complex ways. And obviously computers are far better at doing that as compared to uh, individuals. Uh, when you need to decide how to trade it, you need to uh, do th things like figuring out which exchange to trade it on. Uh, there are stocks which are listed on BSE as well as NSE. So do you want to, do you want to trade it on BSE or do you want to trade it on NSE? Uh, if it's a large order, you need to decide, uh, do I want to put this order completely or do I want to slice it and put portions of this order? All of this to get the best price. And you need to do this in real time because the market is changing. You need to continuously listen to the market and decide what is the optimal way to execute. Again, technology is great at doing this. Uh, it can do things way faster than humans can. Uh, uh, as a result, if you really think about it, the business has transformed into a race of algorithms. And the competitive edge in the trading business is pretty much the quality and the speed of your technology. Uh, the other example I, I give, and which is more relatable, is banking. If you look at bank banking, again, it has transformed hugely in the last two decades. Uh, meaning most of us don't even go to a branch anymore because we can do all of our banking online. Now, the logical end to this trend is a purely online bank uh, without any branches, without any sales folks. And that's already happening. There are banks in the US, the Ali Bank is an example of purely online banks. Uh, even banks in India, for example, State Bank of India has a purely online account called Yono. Uh, JP Morgan has gone one step further and they have a purely mobile banking offering called FIN. So, so, so again, meaning once you remove the sales and the branch from the picture, uh, the, the channel itself is becoming purely technology based. Uh, currently I work in asset and wealth management within JP Morgan. Uh, this is about managing other people's money. Uh, again, uh, here uh, something called as robo-advisors. I don't know if people have heard of them, but so these are again online investment management offerings uh, where not only is the channel online, but the investment making decision making process is completely completely computerized. Uh, so so you have taken away the human element from from both the channel as well as the decision making. Uh, and, and, and interestingly, most of 
the robo advisory offerings are by fintech firms so fintechs are essentially technology startups which provide financial services and uh, these uh, fintech firms are actually ch challenging the established players uh, like banks who are scrambling to keep up because they don't have similar service offerings and unless they can provide the same quality uh, of service they are going to lose out to these fintechs uh, just as a indication of how uh, serious this is in in the us uh, robo advisors manage upwards of hundreds of billions of dollars already even in india we have robo advisors and they currently manage around uh, 100 crore worth of uh, rupees of uh, investments in india so as 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 you can see these were examples from the sales world uh, the next people to pitch in were from the control and uh, compliance space uh, finance is a heavily regulated space uh, risk management is extremely key because uh, you can earn a lot of money but you can lose a lot of money quickly as well and that's where risk management and regulatory compliance is fairly critical uh, and, and my response to them was but how are you making uh, this area better? Surprisingly not, again by the use of technology. Uh, a simple example, fraud detection. When if you think of it, fraud detection is like finding that proverbial needle in a haystack. Uh, meaning, if you look at credit card transactions, there are millions of credit card transactions happening. And you need to find that one or two or 10 or 100 transactions uh, which are potentially fraudulent and flag them. Again, uh, technology is far better at doing this as uh, compared to humans. Uh, let's fast forward. The next people who stood up were the operations of the back office uh, folks. Uh, these are the guys who own the manual processes to ensure that the transactions are completed. Meaning you do something, but there is a lot of back office uh, processing that, that needs to happen before a transaction get com gets completed. Um, and, and here, my response was very simple. All manual processes should be automated. Uh, meaning there is, no, there is no need for manual processes. Uh, computers can do repetitive processes far better than humans. They don't get bored. They don't make mistakes. Uh, not only are they faster, but they can work 24 by 7. Uh, I don't think any one of us can do that. So, so, so clearly, other than areas where you need subjective human intelligence, there is really no need for uh, uh, manual processing. Uh, now, obviously, the, the industry has a lot of manual processing. So how do you get rid of it? Uh, that's where robotic process automation comes in. Uh, that's a technology which can quickly help you uh, automate uh, business processes using technology. Uh, so uh, to summarize the two trends from this complete discussion, which I feel provides the edge to technology in finance are one, the online channel. Clearly, the shift from the physical channels to the online channel is uh, completely technology driven. And the second is computer based processing, more complex, faster, especially decision making, meaning human beings, uh, that was our uh, unique proposition that we could make decisions. But clearly, computers are now even coming in those areas. Uh, and, and they can do better and faster decisions than we can. So obviously, after this discussion happened, uh, I, I couldn't convince any of my colleagues that JP Morgan was a technology firm. And a year down the line, Mariana Lake, who was who's the CFO of JP Morgan, chief financial officer, she actually said in an investor presentation that JP Morgan is a technology firm. <laughs> and I felt extremely vindicated. I emailed all those guys saying, you know what, I told you this a year ago. Uh, then I started looking at other uh, firms and other CEOs. And no surprise, Michael Corbett, city CEO, he said, in many ways, we see ourselves as a technology company with a banking license. Uh, next, I look at, uh, looked at Lloyd uh, Blankfein. He's the former CEO of Goldman Sachs now. He, step, he went one step further. He's saying that Goldman Sachs is not just a technology firm. It's a platform, a technology platform. Uh, clearly, all the senior management folks are uh, coming over to the same uh, uh, point of view. Uh, I was looking for an Indian context for this presentation about some uh, Indian financial services firm which says the same thing. The only example I could find is Yes Bank. In one of their press releases, uh, they did say that it's a technology company in the business of banking. Uh, okay, so <laughs> circling back, if, if you really think of it, I feel technology is even more critical for financial services 
as compared to other firms, say manufacturing or retail. Um, and the reason for that is the intangible nature of financial products. Uh, there are no factories, there is no raw material, uh, there are no inventories, there are no warehouses. Uh, it's just people and technology. Th that, that's all there is. Uh, there are no physical deliveries. Uh, if you think of it, when you buy a, sh a stock, uh, how is that getting manifested? It's just two changes. One in your bank account, where your money goes down. Another in your DMAT account, where the number of shares you hold goes up. That's it. There, there is no physical repercussion of the transaction. Uh, it's, it's just information being exchanged and manipulated across financial uh, intermediaries. Uh, so, so, so that's where I feel uh, technology far, is far more critical for finance. The other uh, result, the, the, the other thing that happens is that they end up owning a lot of data. Meaning every transaction you do, every uh, key click that you have, every preference that you have is getting collected. And uh, this data is clearly becoming a very, very big asset for the firm. But what do they do with this data? I mean, just having that data and storing it is not going to be very useful. They need to use this data for decision making. Uh, clearly, to drive better profitability, more clients, whatever, lesser risk. But you have a lot of data. How do you use it to drive better decision making? And uh, how do you do that? Uh, that's where machine learning comes in. Uh, meaning it's, it's a buzzword. Everybody, I'm hoping, at least has heard that there's something called machine learning. Uh, the machine in the machine learning is actually a computer algorithm, uh, and it actually learns. Uh, how do you make it learn? By uh, feeding it a lot of data. So, so you have a machine learning model, you, feed, you train it with a lot of historical data, then you have a trained model. To this trained model, which has now learned patterns from the data that you fed it, you can give a new case. And then it can give you a decision. Okay? So, very simple, uh, the, the actual implementations are complex, but uh, so let's take a case of fraud detection. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, in case of fraud detection, you have data for the last 10 years about all the transactions that happened and which were fraudulent and which were not. You feed those transactions to the machine learning model. What you get is a trained fraud model. Now when you give it a new transaction, it will give you an indication whether the new transaction is fraud or not. Uh, so, so, so clearly, machine learning is, the, 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 the new thing, uh, not very new, but it's currently the thing which a lot of financial services firms are looking at how do we adopt this to make our businesses better. Uh, machine learning itself has been around for more than 50 years now. The algorithms were developed more than 50 years ago. Uh, what has changed in the recent past is obviously there's a lot more data. I mean, if you compare 50 years ago, there was hardly any data. There must be like uh, a million times more data right now or something like that. So there's a lot more data. The second thing is also the amount of computing power that we have at uh, our hands has changed dramatically. And as a result, we can actually uh, process this data, this humongous amount of data far more effectively. Uh, actually, the the Building a, a machine learning model is not very complex. It's, uh, there are libraries available, and uh, you can select uh, which library to use, and you can build a model fairly quickly. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean that any of us can become a data scientist immediately. You, there are more than 100 algorithms. Each one of them have uh, 10, 20 parameters. Uh, you need to understand the underlying probability and uh, concepts, uh, statistical concepts. Uh, so, so, so obviously, I mean, it's, it's, it's a science by itself. It's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, but even more than that, I feel the other critical thing that you need to have is a business perspective. And uh, this is something uh, that I cannot em emphasize enough, that uh, meaning if you want to use machine learning, or for that matter, any technology, uh, you, you, you clearly need uh, a a very strong understanding of the underlying business. You need to be able to collaborate with the business users. You need to understand the entities in the business model. You need to understand uh, what the opportunities are. You need to understand what the challenges are. Only then can you be successful as a, a technologist. Uh, so to kind of summarize, all technology firms, all financial services firms are actually technology firms. Uh, this 
is because technology is providing the key competitive edge in this industry. Firms who look at themselves as technology firms will be the ones who will succeed. If you are an aspiring technologist, this represents a great opportunity as well as a challenge to you. Uh, to succeed, not only do you need to build your technology skills, but you also need to build deep understandings in the business that you want to service. And then we can all uh, win in this world where technology rules. Thanks.